do the worship service. We're going to also watch a video in a couple of minutes uh, for Reach Texas. And uh, we'll talk about Reach Texas in a minute. Uh, first of all, I want to let you all know, in Cypress Park, there is a tear out, uh, as it normally is, for the Wednesday night meeting. We're having Sloppy Joe's on Wednesday. If you are interested in eating with us, please fill that out and place it in the offering plate later on in the worship service when the offering plate comes by. Also, in your uh, in, in, in the uh, pews there, or the chairs, uh, you will see about every six or so chairs, a black folder. Uh, it says Little Cypress Baptist Church on it. And if you can just take that out, and there should be a pen or pencil in there. If you could fill that out uh, with the name and address phone number, or if you're a church member, you just click on the, check on the, uh, that box. That would be wonderful to hear. Also, next to those black folders, there are some, um, lots of envelopes. There's basically offering envelopes and special offering envelopes. But there's uh, one right here I want to point out to. It's called the Reach Texas Envelope. We're about to watch the video. And uh, there is a, this is the envelope to use. If you don't have the Reach Texas Envelope, you can use some other envelope. Just mark it Reach Texas. But our goal for our church is to raise $3,000. For Reach Texas, this is for uh, missions all across the state of Texas uh, through our state convention, and we will uh, see a uh, mission work that's happening in Lubbock uh, today. And also, just just use that form. You can fill it out to, of course, uh, fill out checks to Southern Baptist Church, but we'll send all that to uh, to the Southern Baptist Texas Convention for for Reach Texas. Also, right next to those envelopes, a prayer request form. It should be green like this or white, and if you open it up, it's uh, like a big bookmark and has several choices for a prayer request, uh, uh, whatever your prayer may be. We have somebody that prays for these prayer requests every Sunday during the message point of the worship service, and um, we're going to have a reading time after the video, and Mr. Jim Glass or someone will be standing up here next to the Christian flag. And he will take those uh, prayer requests up for you. He will receive those prayer requests and, and take them back to the uh, prayer room for, uh, for some to pray for later on in the service during the message time. Also, just want to let you know about a few other, uh, a few other announcements. Some of them are in the uh, bulletins, I was heart. Some are not. But staff positions, we're still looking for two workers for the learning center and also uh, at least one worker for nursery. And so if you're interested in that, please fill out an application. We have applications either in the uh, Learning Center office or in the church office. And you can come by and fill one of those out. And also, I um, want to point you to the little insert, blue insert that we have in the Cypress Park. Uh, two different announcements on there. One's for the parent-child dedication coming up next month, October 4th and 5th. There's going to be a little class on October 4th. It's a Saturday from 10 o'clock to noon. And then we will have the dedication uh, ceremony in the worship service on October 5th, uh, Sunday morning. So just please uh, look at that uh, announcement if you're interested in that. And you can bring your name uh, no later than September 21st, which is next Sunday, uh, to the church office or for the Nick and, and for people who are interested in being part of this uh, parent-child dedication. And also, we have a new mailing address. Um, we, the old mailing address still applies, but we have a post office box, and it's right down there. And just remember, uh, the zip code is 77631, not 632. So all the post office box zip codes in order are 77631. So just let you all um, be aware of that. And we'll have that posted for a few weeks probably to let you all know what's going on. We have a lot going on today. We have uh, some good things. Uh, we have quartets going to sing later on in the service. Uh, uh, we got some good things. We also have a uh, a pastor of this church from uh, from way back, apparently, uh, before I was born. I'm telling you about that. And Mr. Wilbur Ansley, Reverend Wilbur Ansley, is here. He's going to come pray um, in, in a few minutes uh, during the regular pastoral prayer time. And Brother David might have a few other words to say about uh, Reverend Ansley as well. Well, let's uh, watch this video. It's, uh, again, this is Lubbock. Uh, missions work is happening in Lubbock, Texas. Lubbock 
Detroit is really a kind of booming town. It's going to probably boom even more in the coming years because of the oil industry and what's going on in the towns around you. Oaks have a little over 200,000 people, over about 35,000 college students. Texas Tech is over 30,000 students, over 2,000 international students that come to, to love it, to make it home from all over the world. I grew up in Salvadoran home. It was very sort of sheltered. I did grow up in a Christian home, a charismatic church, actually. Just my first year here at Tech was new and very uh, different from what I've been used to, and so it was, just, it was a struggle to try to kind of fit in and figure everything out. Right here in Texas, our generation is dealing with this concept that we need to be tolerant of everyone, whether that is people who believe in gay marriages and homosexuality. And we're being taught that we need to not send Mother's Day cards or not do something that would be a gender-specific role because that child might believe that they would rather be a boy instead of a girl. And honestly, if the church, in my case, would not have stepped up and would not have given me the solid foundation that I needed to know that that was biblically wrong, there would be no way to know it was wrong because it's so widely accepted as true. I think one of the, the things that youth ministers and pastors and parents can do is not shelter kids, help them understand that there's a big world out there, there are a lot of other worldviews out there, help them understand where they're coming from and how they can communicate with them, but also just have a deep foundation in what they believe when they come to the campus because those, those students who are marginal in their beliefs really struggle when they get here. They're either going to latch on to their faith and really grow or they're going to be pulled into a worldview that's not what they grew up in. The new reality in Texas is that people believe that they can believe whatever they want to believe and that my truth might not be the same as your truth. And what the church needs at this point is solid scriptural teaching that's being given out to all generations, not just college students, but starting from the younger ones and going to the older ones, saying what is biblical truth and how to best reach the people that are around us. I encourage you and your church to give through Reach Texas and Proper Program. Together we can reach more people than we could individually. Texas, that's a good offering to uh, be getting to this next week. Uh, on the 21st, we're going to have a chili cook-off for uh, normal chili cook-off that we have to help raise money for Reach Texas and have a nice fellowship at the same time. And of course, it'll be in the dining hall after the Sunday evening service. I remember this evening we have a prayer service at 6.30. We have discipleship classes at 5 o'clock. And if you notice on the announcements, uh, before the service began, there is a new discipleship class starting in two weeks on the 28th for ladies. And, uh, and it should be a good study. It's going to happen in the uh, Belt Forest High School class just behind the old fellowship hall. And then at 4 o'clock today, we have committee meetings. I'll let you all know if you are on the um, Public Relations Committee, that's, that meeting has been postponed. So there will be, a, will be another time. So just let you know about that. Well, let's all stand up and greet each other this morning in the name of the Lord.
in the church history of kind of things, uh, how they went through the years. Uh, as he's on the first page of the Articles of the Corporation of the Constitution and Bylaws, his name is still there. If they say something goes wrong, they're going to be looking for you now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he also, uh, as, uh, as pastor, was instrumental in many men who, in fact, was surrendered to the gospel ministry during the time that he served uh, and other things of that, that nature. Uh, I would like, if you would, to read with me from Romans chapter 8 before he prays. Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 28. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. For those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to become conformed to the image of His Son, so that He would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom He predestined, He also called. And these whom He called, He also justified. And these whom He justified, he also glorified. I don't know whether I can pray a 50 year old prayer or not. <clears throat> uh, joy to be here. And I've seen so many of you already. And each one of you caused my heart and mind to leap with joy and the good memories. You know, in the Old Testament in Genesis, there were seven fat cows and seven lean cows. We won't go into that, but we had seven fat cows here. Amen. Good time. Hallelujah time. We were able to praise God and see souls saved. And I see a growth in all the new buildings. And, and uh, I would say you got a smart a pastor. <laughs> He invited me here and gave me 10 to 15 minutes and I said, that's not long enough. Get the plane off the runway. <laughs> and he said, well, and he, he pulled the scripture.